COVID-19 relaxes some preventive measures for the epidemic in the country. Irish Aid and EU release about 1 billion kwacha to implement social protection and climate change programs in the country. Consortium of NGOs in Sexual Productive Health Rights is calling for the domestication of policies in the country to address the high rate of child marriages. And finally, sports use the flames, suffer a 3-0 defeat at the hands of Ivory Coast in a 2022 World Cup qualifier played in South Africa. This is Sibon Gilesiambo. Thank you for joining me. The, the country's COVID-19 positivity rate has relaxed now. some preventive measures for the epidemic in the country following the decrease in new cases. Announcing the new measures in New York on Friday afternoon, co-chairperson for the task force was also Minister of Health, Kumbiza Kandoda Chiponda said, among other changes, a maximum of 2,000 people will now be allowed to attend outdoor public gatherings, among others. Meanwhile, President of the Society of Medical Doctors in Malawi, Dr. Victor Miti, has advised Malawians to remain vigilant. This report by Winston Kaimira. The country's COVID-19 positivity rate now stands at 2%, according to the Presidential Task Force on the Epidemic. Co-chairperson for the Task Force, Kumbize Gandodo Chiponda, says the review of the COVID-19 regulations follows the decrease in the number of new cases from August this year. Gandodo Jibonda, who is also Minister of Health, says therefore Malawi is now at level one of implementing COVID-19 preventive measures. The minister said permitted capacity for minibuses is back at 100% from 75%. Public gatherings are now restricted to 50% of the capacity of the venue for indoors, but with a maximum of 500 people. She said outdoor events must have not more than 2,000 people. We are allowing in terms of numbers 2,000 for any outdoor events. If it's a wedding, uh, if it's a church gathering, uh, it's a drama group uh, having an event, uh, the allowed number is 2,000. But we have to stress that even those 2,000, you make provision of the face mask. The minister further said no international visitor will now be denied entry upon production of the latest COVID-19 certificate while the working from home arrangement has been suspended. This is how the president of the Society of Medical Doctors of Malawi, Dr. Victor Miti, has reacted. These measures shouldn't come as a complete liberty. There is a chance for more waves to come. We therefore need to be vigilant and more importantly we need to consider going for the vaccination because that is the ultimate way out. Meanwhile, the number of people accessing COVID-19 vaccine is said to have gone up to an average of 6,000 to 7,000 per day. This is Winston Kaimira reporting for Zodiac in a long way. In Irish aid and European Union EU have bankrolled social protection and climate change programs to the tune of 1 billion kwacha. The programs are targeting over 60,000 vulnerable families in order to reduce poverty in the country. And speaking during the launch in Chikwawa, the authorities said the program with the implementation in seven districts are exposed to which are exposed to burning dry spells and flies to support ultra with the ultra poor with food and cash transfers to be resilient. Christopher Sunday reports. Scores of people gathered at Namira ground under Mlima area in Chikwawa on Thursday to witness the launch of a one billion kwacha social protection and climate change interventions, which will target more than sixty thousand poor families in seven districts, including Chikwawa. Sanje, Neno, Mulanje, Zomba, and in Zimba. The initiatives, which are being funded by the Irish Aid and the European Union, will be implemented by Christian Aid, United Peoples, Concern Worldwide, and Eagles Relief to enhance resilience among most vulnerable households. Christian Aid Country Director Luke Teu says the projects are intending to complement the cash transfer program with components of food security, climate change, and creating wealth among Atrapua families. Minister of Gender Patricia Kaliati says the extension of social protection program to a larger population should motivate more parents to end forced teenage marriages and stop abandoning children to loiter around the country's streets. Part of the program which we are looking forward for the cash transfer program is to see our children going to school, be it boys and girls. And in that way, when we uh, eliminate any marriages, we are going to have a better Malawi, a world well educated and well developed Malawi and uh, when we also educate the uh, boy child we are going to have uh, Malawi without even 
uh, gender based violence in the country. Kariati added that after the expiry of a 14 day admetum next week, Friday, they will start removing street connected children and arresting all irresponsible parents. Reporting for Zodiac, this is Christopher Sande. Government has launched a free public Wi-Fi zone initiative as a step towards creating a digital economy in the country. And speaking during the launch at Blanta Secondary School on Friday, Minister of Information Gospel Kazako say the free Wi-Fi zone will be implemented in public places, mainly markets, schools or hospitals and airports where Malawians will access reliable internet services. And he explains. This government, what we want to do uh, much more is to ensure that we create uh, accessibility, we also create affordability, and we create presence. Uh, these are the tools that we're going to use uh, to achieve the creation of the digital economy that we need. And you know the leadership of this country uh, is fully aware uh, 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 President Lazarus McCarthy Chakwera is leading a team, is leading a government that is very, very fluent and aware of the need to make sure that our people are not lagging behind um, in as far as the issues to do with uh, digital means are concerned. We want to create a digital economy and for us to do that we must make sure that our people are connected. Uh, now, uh, what we're doing now is to introduce the connection, is to introduce the accessibility, is to introduce um, these tools uh, to the people, even people that didn't expect that they would have them. This is why we're going around in our markets, we'll be going around in our hospitals, and now we in schools. This is Blanta Secondary Schools, and the several other schools have actually already been uh, connected. Uh, the future is digital, the future is E. There's no way we are going to develop if we are going to ignore uh, our digital uh, development. This is why uh, government is doing all it can, is making all huge investments uh, towards uh, the digital realization. Mino Chief Executive Officer for Public-Private Partnership Commission, Patrick Abambe, said full utilization of digital platforms provides an opportunity to citizens to fully contribute in the socioeconomic development of the country. So the Public-Private Partnership Commission um, is an agent of Malawi government and we are implementing this uh, project called the Digital Malawi Project. This is a project uh, aimed at um, increasing access to uh, digital uh, tools and platforms uh, for all Malawians. And uh, we, uh, as a PPC, you know, we do get, you know, uh, private investors to deliver on certain components uh, that will support uh, the growth and development of uh, digital in Malawi. So the free Wi-Fi uh, initiative is one of those components whereby we have uh, partnered with uh, TNM uh, to provide uh, free Wi-Fi in selected places uh, throughout Malawi. It's just a start. We are still discussing uh, extending this program to other new uh, sites. We believe that uh, by demonstrating you know, the positive benefits now, uh, other investors can also be attracted. We are open to talk to more people uh, so that uh, this can be expanded. I'm aware that MACRA were also you know, considering the same initiative. Uh, so we trust that uh, as uh, the country moves forward, there will be more such opportunities going forward. Tempest flared during a stakeholders meeting in Ilongwe Court by the Roads Authority on the expansion works of the Kenyatta Drive and Mzimba Street in the city. Most of the stakeholders, who included property owners and environmentalists, expressed their displeasure at the lack of consultation prior to the start of the project to which the authority admitted. The expansion project will see construction of a six-lane highway from Parliament to Roundabout to Nico Centre. But that's what has more. President Lazarus Chagwira presided over the groundbreaking ceremony of the Kenyatta Drive Expansion Project in August this year, but it seems some stakeholders are not very impressed with the process leading up to the start of the project. During a stakeholders meeting in Lilongwe on Friday, some property owners openly told the roads authority officials that they were never consulted and yet they will feel the impact as some of their buildings will have to be demolished to pave way. The same applies to environmentalists. 
Matthews Malata is one of the environmental rights activists. Our concern has been that the project started without an environmental and social impact assessment, ACA. The consultant also lied that they did some public consultations, yet they did not. And we are happy because the Roads Authority has admitted that indeed whatever they did was illegal. And also concerned is the Malawi Institute of Architects, whose president is Catherine Sani. I think the issue on our part comes into the consultation, consultation with us as architects, as designers of the urban fabric. We are all aware that Lilongwe City is a city by design. Um, it was designed as a garden city, a city to have trees along its roads and boulevards and streets. And the greenness we experienced in Ilongwe, it was designed. The Roads Authority, through its chief engineer responsible for major projects, Isaac Unkeani, admitted that the consultation process would have been held much earlier, and that's why they called for this consultative meeting. When we do the surveys for the road projects, and we see which properties are affected. At that point is when we are supposed to have these meetings. In the end, the Minister of Transport has ordered the Roads Authority to organize another stakeholders meeting to iron out the differences. For Zodiac, this is Madalito Piri reporting. And slightly above half a billion kwacha will be spent paying compensation to people displaced by Salim Mashuga Company. At least 560 households have already been paid, at least 360 million kwacha. And according to Acting Chief Executive Officer for the Green Belt Authority, Amon Mluwila, 200 million kwacha more will be paid out to the remaining lot. These people are vacating at least 6,000 hectares of land that used to belong to press agriculture for the company to extend its sugarcane plant for more production of sugar. Some of the people have waited for about five years to receive the compensation and relocate to the new place. Government has identified Group Village Edman Imponde, who is among the beneficiaries whose entire village has been relocated, has complained over timing saying rains will be starting soon and it is hard to move to a new settlement. He suggests they be allowed to stay only this season. Senior Chief Kombeza, while calling on government to expedite payment to the remaining people, asked the Salima Sugar Company to ensure that locals are employed at the company. Meanwhile, Acting Chief Executive Officer for Green Belt Authority, Amon Mluila, says the company will now begin expansion works. It was important that before we do that, we compensate them. So this process has taken some time, and uh, I'm happy that the government has released the, uh, the amount, amount of funds amounting to 360 million. Uh, for this process. So it is very important because number one, uh, it will improve the livelihoods of these people, it will enable them to relocate to the land that we have identified, and more importantly, it will help us to, um, um, uh, to, 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 to increase, I mean, to develop further the scheme. Over 2,000 households were affected by the coming in of Salima Sugar Company, a project under the Green Belt Authority, covering land of about 6,000 hectares, formerly of press agriculture. Reporting for Zodiac from Salima, I am Joseph Mazizi. You're watching news on Zodiac. We'll be right back. Stand by. Wisdom in Limbe will be celebrating 100 years of existence in Malawi. The celebrations will take place at the school's grounds from 9 a.m. on Saturday, 9th October 2021. Theme for the centenary celebrations is Thanking God for 100 years of educating and empowering the girl child. A special cloth and t-shirts are on sale at the school and in a long way from Mrs. Stella Kuzemba on sale number 099-518-6610. The celebrations will start with a mass by the Archbishop Thomas Lukum Susa. Come one, come all. Come to Showbrecht for a more low, low price birthday. This year we're giving you more savings and more deals so you can fill your trolley with everything you need. Oh, at our low, low prices. Like Little Chief Whole Frozen Chicken, just 1,999 kwacha per kg. 
and buy both 500 grams of Kellux cornflakes and one liter Lilonga dairy milk for just 2,799 quarter 99 Tambala. Mo low low price birthday only at Showbrite. Malawi, 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 twenty sixty three, Mokomera Ariense. Welcome back and look at the headlines as we continue with the news. Presidential Task Force on COVID-19 relaxes some preventive measures for the epidemic in the country. Irish Aid and EU release about 1 billion kwaja to implement social protection and climate change programs in the country. Consortium of NGOs in sexual productive health rights is calling for the domestication of policies in the country to address the high rate of child marriages. In finally, in sports news, the Flames suffered 3 0 defeat by the hands of Ivory Coast in a 2022 World Cup called Fire Plate in South Africa. A consortium of NGOs in sexual productive health rights is calling for the domestication of policies in the country to address the high rate of child marriages laid by Oxfam. In her future, her choice drive, the NGOs have since 2020 managed to end 78 child marriages in the two districts of Lirongwe and Walaka. The revelations came out as Canadian Ambassador Caroline Delaney expected the projects being implemented by the NGOs. Shimon Parata reports. Visiting Canadian Ambassador Caroline Delaney says Malawi should put priority on ratifying laws that would put to rest teen marriages. She inspected projects under a campaign drive, her future high choice, implemented by close to five NGOs led by Oxfam. My recommendation is to keep doing what you're doing. You've got very, Malawi has very strong legislation. There's very good legislation with regards to ending child marriage. There's good legislation on combating gender-based violence. And now it's a case of implementation. It's a case of taking projects like this where we're working with the Ministry of Education, with the Ministry of Health, and with partners like Oxfam and AMREF. Oxfam country representative Linga Lireni Mihoa is impressed with strides that have so far been registered as she says the organizations have managed to end 78 marriages in the two districts of Lilongwe and Balaka since inception of the project. The 78 dates from 2020 when we started going around with the chiefs, setting up the bylaws and being able to create a movement that can actually say, this child has been married off before the year, uh, before age of 18, let's get her back. During the tour, some survivors of child marriage appealed for hefty investment in sexual reproductive health. Her future, her choice campaign seeks to reach 20,000 beneficiaries, including 8,000 adolescents in five health facilities in Balaga and nine in Lilongwe. This is Jimwe Parata for Zodiac. And the destruction of forest reserves continues in this country, despite the fact that the consequences, such as erratic rains and challenges with drinking water everywhere. Forestry and Natural Resources Minister Nancy Timbo says this is a concern to government and she was speaking when she visited forest restoration sites which Mulanje Mountain Conservation Trust is promoting around Mulanje Mountain. Essence Dimani has more. When she toured some sites under restoration by Mulanja Mountain Conservation Trust, MMCT, Minister of Forestry and Natural Resources, Nancy Tembo, said erratic rains and drinking water challenges the country is currently experiencing are consequences of deforestation. Tembo said despite these challenges, some communities continue destroying the forest reserves, leaving them bare, which is very shocking. She therefore commended MMCT 
as the partners and villagers that are committed towards the restoration of destroyed forests. I'm very impressed with the collaboration between the MMCT and the communities. As government, we are committed to restore our degraded landscapes. And this is uh, the initiatives here. And we encourage this community to continue and hope that this work being done it can be replicated in other communities. MMCT Executive Director Carol Bruso said so far they are supporting 24 Nazarees, eight of them are cedar Nazarees around Mulanja Mountain, ready for replanting this rainy season. We're getting prepared. There's always uh, a lot of work to be done because we're planting trees everywhere, literally from the top of the mountain to all the way around the mountain. Different trees for different purposes, different groups doing the planting, etc. So in total, there are 24 nurseries around the mountain that have got trees in ready for this year. Group village Heduma Nakonyo is leading Nakonyo Sida Nazare group and she committed supporting the group in raising as many seedlings as possible. Later, the minister visited the Sida Energy, an organization that has impact on our forestation activities at its project site, Sugasanje. For Zodiac in Mulanje, this is Hastings Jimani reporting. We now go to sports news. The Flames have suffered a 3-0 defeat at the hands of Ivory Coast in the 2022 World Cup qualifier played in South Africa. The Ivorians now lead Group D with seven points from three games, having also beaten Cameroon and drawn with Mozambique last month. The Flames are three points from the last month's 1-0 win over Mozambique. Sambanda reports. The Flames have made their life very difficult in the qualification campaign for next year's World Cup tournament in Qatar after they suffered a humiliating 3-0 defeat at the hands of Ivory Coast during a Group D match played at the Orlando Stadium in Johannesburg, South Africa on Friday. Ibrahim Sangare, who plays for PSV Eindhoven in the Netherlands, and Max Alain Grade, who plays for Sivaspo in Turkey, were amongst the scorers for the star-studded Ivorians, who now lead the group with seven points from three games, having drawn with Mozambique as well as defeat in Cameroon last month. The Ivorian's tactician Patrice Bumo said his charges made good use of their scoring chances. Uh, it's always a tough game when I, I play against uh, Malawi. I think we were in good position and we, we created some uh, some chances to try to be stronger in the midfield. It's what uh, the plan uh, has worked, so I'm quite happy. His Flames counterpart Meke Mwase considered defeat. Experienced and strong team that is uh, also uh, a very young and ambitious team that we want to, to tolerate as our friends. But yes, they have shown that they are experienced team. Football analyst Henry Gome says the defeat is a huge setback for the Flames ahead of the return leg in Cotonou on Monday. Trenio is too much. You look in the group now, what it means is that uh, Malawi is the team that has conceded uh, more goals than any other team uh, in the group. Focusing on what we have seen so far, I think we have put ourselves in a very, very awkward position. Uh, this result has put us in a very awkward position uh, in as far as qualification for the World Cup 2022 is concerned. This was the first meeting between Malawi and Ivory Coast in 12 years after they last played a 1-0 stalemate during the 2009-2010 Joint Africa Cup of Nations and World Cup qualifiers in Blantyre. Malawi's last victory over Ivory Coast came in 1974 during an international strength testing match. That's about what we had time for in this edition of news. And before we go, a look at the headlines. Presidential Task Force on COVID-19 relaxes some preventive measures for the epidemic in the country. Irish Aid and EU release about 1 billion kwacha to implement social protection and climate change programs in the country. Consortium of NGOs in sexual productive health rights is calling for the domestication of policies if the country is to address the high rate of child marriages. In finally, in sports news, the Flames suffered a 3 0 defeat at the hands of Ivory Coast in a 2022 World Cup qualifier played in South Africa. More news on our website. This is Sibong Goodbye.